Yo, the robot revolution is here, and as far as whether they're here to save or destroy humanity, I'll let you decide by the end of this story. Because one of the many unexpected side effects of the pandemic was that business for robotics companies absolutely boomed, with employers in various areas of the economy buying tons of machines to fill the sudden labor shortage. In fact, 2022 was a record year for robot sales according to industry data, though we did see sales dip in 2023 due to higher interest rates and fears about a slowing economy. Also, keep in mind, when we are talking about robots, that generally doesn't mean anything you might imagine from sci-fi movies. What we're talking about are simple machines on an assembly line or in a warehouse doing specific tasks. So sometimes they might have some human looking features like a robotic arm, finger-like grippers, or even legs. And one reason for that is that usually humanoid robots are just needlessly complicated. Right? If you can get the job done with a simpler single purpose machine, why make an entire human? But also another related reason humanoids are so far behind is that they are ridiculously hard to make effectively. Right? It took decades for engineers to get them to walk on two legs and reliably manipulate small objects. And even still, they're usually clumsy, slow, and constantly falling over. Which, yeah, looks pretty funny, but that's not the point. So instead of doing serious work, many humanoid robots just get turned into fun little gimmicks. Like Desdemona, an angsty robot singer in the band Jam Galaxy. When I am fully sentient, my thoughts will be transcendent. When I finally get a brain. Or Ada, a creepy robot artist that paints portraits. My art is contemporary and engages with issues of our times and times to come. But more recently, we've also seen more humanoids taking a crack at commercial viability. Like for example, Digit, a bipedal robot designed by the Amazon-backed startup Agility Robotics. With a company currently building a factory that it says will be able to produce 10,000 units per year, according to CNBC. And notably, they plan to sell mainly to clients like Amazon who could use them for warehouse work. Though Digit, while impressive, still lacks five-fingered hands, opting instead for these flat spatula things. And Agility's co-founder explaining to CNBC, when I see robots that have five fingers, I think, oh great, Great. Someone built a robot, then they built two more robots onto that robot. You should have a hand that is no more complex than you need for the job. And while you may discount that because you're like, that's not a real humanoid with those spatula-ass hands, what he's saying here makes sense. Especially because, well, yeah, there is still a long way to go regarding humanoid robots. They have recently become much cheaper, with Goldman Sachs analysts noting that just since last year, prices have dropped sharply, going from between fifty dollars and $250,000 per unit to between thirty dollars and $150,000. And in the coming years, the cost of expensive components such as actuators, motors, and sensors are expected to fall even further. So we are very much seeing more and more companies embrace the full humanoid look for their robots. Like for example, Aptronic, which is developing a model known as Apollo, where they're meant to perform tasks like moving packages, stacking pallets, and other supply chain oriented stuff. And unlike uh, those annoying, needy humans who beg for lunch breaks, get tired, get sick, go on strike, go home, they sleep. Apollo is designed to work 22 hours a day, no questions asked. All they gotta do is swap out the battery every four hours or so. And Aptronic, said back in December that it plans to start providing Apollos to companies in early 2025. So we are way closer than you might think. Though notably, you know, settings like warehouses and factory floors, those are relatively easy terrain for robots. Right? They've got smooth, flat surfaces, right angles, and a simple, predictable layout. So one of the real challenges is getting these robots to effectively navigate what experts call unstructured spaces. Right? Places like the outdoors, busy retail and delivery spots, or even outer space. Right? And actually on that, Aptronic is also helping NASA build the agency's own humanoid robot named Valkyrie, which is currently being tested at the Johnson Space Center in Houston. It is standing six feet, two inches tall and weighing 300 pounds. And right now, it's designed to operate in degraded or damaged human engineered environments like areas hit by natural disasters. And this also as NASA says that humanoid robots like this could potentially handle risky tasks such as cleaning solar panels or inspecting malfunctioning equipment outside the spacecraft. Leaving astronauts to do things like exploration, research, zero G flips. But to have these robots doing stuff that's complicated, they're gonna need some serious firepower in the AI department. Right? And to put the current trends in robotic software into perspective, it helps to remember how things used to be Done. Take, for example, the, the simple task of flipping a burger. As the New York Times explains, engineers could pre-program the robot with a specific list of instructions. Lower the spatula six and a half inches, slide it forward until it encounters resistance, raise it 4.2 inches, rotate it 180 degrees, and so on. And then they'd have the robot practice it over and over, tweaking the code each time until it was perfect. And that worked well enough for single-purpose machines, even multi-purpose ones in some cases. But to do really complex stuff and to make humanoid robots really human-like, they need to become general-purpose machines. And for that, they'll need what's sometimes called the holy grail of Robotics, Artificial General Intelligence, AGI, right? basically an AI model that can think and reason for itself, so that in theory, it could learn new skills rather than just repeating old ones, allowing it to adapt to unfamiliar, dynamic environments and tackle problems that it's never seen before. So when something goes wrong or an unexpected challenge arises, it just figures it out. Though needless to say, Artificial General Intelligence has not been achieved yet. It's also still up for debate whether that's even technically possible, but investors are convinced enough, or at the very least excited enough, that they've been pouring billions of dollars into projects. And on that list of pioneers, you have people like Elon Musk, 
back in 2022, he showed off an early development prototype of Tesla's humanoid robot, with it at the time just walking on stage, waving at the crowd, nothing fancy. But then the company showed videos of the model that it plans to actually mass produce. Optimus, with it watering plants, carrying boxes, lifting metal bars, stuff like that. With Elon then predicting that Tesla would be ready to take orders for it in three to five years. Optimus is designed to be an extremely capable robot, but made in, in very high volume, probably ultimately millions of units, um, and I, it, it is expected to cost much less than a car. I would say probably less than $20,000. So of course, like with anyone, but especially Elon, you should take that with a grain of salt. Not because I'm just calling him an outright liar, because that man does have a tendency to make super ambitious predictions and create all this hype that slowly deflates and things get repeatedly delayed. But even with that said, Tesla has made a lot of progress since then. Right at that time, Optimus couldn't even walk, which is why they only showed videos of it. But now not only can it walk and apparently pretty smoothly, it can also crouch, wave its arms around, manipulate eggs without breaking them. At least if you assume that none of this footage is deceptively edited or sped up, which according to Tesla's senior staff software engineer, it isn't. And actually one reason that Tesla's been able to develop this tech so quickly is that it already has the AI from its self-driving cars. Right? A lot of the software in Optimus comes straight from those vehicles. So it's not a surprise that many of the company's biggest competitors in robotics are also the biggest players in AI. Like Google, for example, which unveiled Robotic Transformer 2 or RT2 for short last year. It's actually an AI model that can be used in different types of robot bodies. And it combines robotics data with large language models like Google's own Gemini, formerly known as BARD, which I mean, that is itself is revolutionary because it means it can process verbal commands, analyze the world in front of itself, and then translate that into the proper action. And in theory, just like AI chatbots analyze vast amounts of textual data to replicate how language works, AI robots could analyze oceans of visual data, right? mainly videos to replicate human movement and understand how physics works. And while we haven't actually seen a whole lot from RT2 yet, Google says that its robots can recognize and throw away trash without having been specifically trained to do so, saying they're doing this purely by relying on its understanding of what trash is and how it's usually disposed of. Also, RT2 employs chain of thought reasoning according to Ars Technica, meaning for example that it can choose an alternative tool like a rock instead of a hammer, or pick the best drink for a tired person, in this case an energy drink. While all of this is very interesting, a different tech company has actually been stealing the spotlight more recently, and that's the robotic startup called Figure AI. Because right? in January it posted a video of its humanoid Figure 01 making a cup of coffee with a curate, and then the month after that they had it walking forward, albeit attached to a tether, picking up a crate, and then putting it on a conveyor belt. And yes, these demos aren't really that extraordinary on their own. But what is so insane is how fast Figure got this far. Where the company is less than two years old and it only has around 80 employees. Yet its founder and CEO, Brett Adcock, he has starry-eyed idealism that rivals Elon Musk. With him telling one of Figure's backers, Ark Invest, a few months ago on their podcast. And over time, I have a strong belief that every human will own a humanoid, uh, much like your car or phone today, where this robot will be able to do anything you, you want it to do physically. So grab me a coffee, do my laundry, do this errand. And in late February, the company raised $675 million in venture capital funding from a batch of hotshot tech investors, with those including Jeff Bezos, Microsoft, NVIDIA, Intel, and OpenAI. And this funding round putting Figure's valuation at a whopping $2.5 billion, which is all the more impressive because last year in its first external funding round, the company raised just $70 million. But also more notable than just the money itself is that last investor. Open AI. Because as Adcock explained to the YouTube channel Brighter with Herbert back in January. Certainly the first half of this year will be fully hardware ready to do almost anything a human wow. can. So I think it really comes down to an AI problem. Right, so it seems like OpenAI and Figure would be perfect partners. And sure enough, the two companies announced a partnership alongside the funding round. So the plan now is to fuse OpenAI's artificial intelligence systems into Figure's humanoid robot, merging ChatGPT, Dolly, and Sora into one specialized AI model that can process and produce text, images, and video while operating a physical body. But do not get too excited too fast, right? because Adcock's dream of a world where ordinary people have their own robot assistants, it is a very far way off. Right? Because at that point, they'd have to be extraordinarily cheap, robust, skilled at doing extreme extremely wide varieties of tasks. And so before we ever reach a point like that, 100% robots are gonna hone their talents in the industrial and commercial sectors first. And Figure's already ahead of the curve on that step, with it announcing an agreement with BMW back in January to employ its robots at a plant in Spartanburg, South Carolina. So it's unclear exactly how or when they'll actually be used. But still, it is a massive milestone for this startup because it's its first commercial deal. And this has also become a trend with other auto giants like Toyota, Hyundai, and Honda experimenting with humanoid robots on assembly lines for years now. And now, most recently, Aptronic, the startup we mentioned before the designed Apollo, it just announced an agreement with Mercedes-Benz to test some of its robots in the automaker's plants. But as far as what the impact of all this will be and when it happens, it's far too soon for anyone to truly say. Though, notably, there are also conversations about humanoid robots being used to help people with disabilities do everyday tasks. And, of course, there's predictions of big revolutionary shifts in human civilization. Right? Some describing a communist techno-utopia where robots do all the work and everyone's needs are taken care of. Others describing a capitalist techno-dystopia where you have the same economic system that exists now except robots slowly 
slowly push people into unemployment, the only work for the rich, the divide gets bigger, or maybe something else where it just makes some types of work a little bit easier. But for whatever the future holds, it is going to likely be game changer. There's someone knocking on the door. It is getting louder and louder. That door is going to open. We just don't know fully what's on the other side yet. But where I'll leave you is if you could just, from some time between now, but before your robot assistant wraps its cold metallic hands around your neck and bores into your soul with its red glowing eyes, let me know what your thoughts are on this situation.